welcome to the Purpose and Profit Club podcast for nonprofit leaders, mission-driven creatives, and social entrepreneurs. Get ready to stop dreaming and start doing. Here, ideas become action. We prioritize purpose and profit. You ready? Let's go. I recently had an email go out to my list that resonated with a lot of people, so much so that I got this notification on LinkedIn that an organization that was on my email list was going live and they were uh, mentioning me in in their live stream. And so I like clicked on the notification and it was called, the, the title of their live stream was Sewing the Pockets Shut. And I was like, Sewing the Pockets Shut? I know about Sewing the Pockets Shut because I had just written an email about that concept. So I'm going to share that concept with you today. And I just want to give a special shout out to Nashville based corner to corner. They're the ones that are inspiring this podcast because they did a couple things. One, they read the email and they were inspired to take action, which is my most favorite thing is not consumption, but action. So it really resonated with them and they were inspired to take action. Two, they put themselves in the arena. They're on this live stream. It looks like they're doing a a um, live stream series over on LinkedIn, which I just love. And they were able to use the concept of sewing the pocket shut and relate it back to their programs, which was really, really cool to hear about in action. So special shout out to y'all. It was, it was a full cir- circle moment and inspired this conversation for today. So in June, I went to what I call my third annual solo retreat in the desert. So it's kind of the cadence tends to be around my birthday, which is in June. And this year, I took my third annual trip to this lovely resort in Arizona. It's super hot. I don't mind it. I like the dry heat. There's a pool. There's all the things I would need, (laughs) air conditioning. And it's a place where I can just disconnect, I can read, I can meander, I can take a nap. I sign up for these very like woo wellness classes and do some spa treatments too. So I go on that retreat and I go to the same resort each year. I just really like it there. And now it's just become like, just almost like, yeah, this is where I go. Well, this year, I noticed something really different. So it's really interesting year over year to notice the change. Like one, the first year to the second year, I noticed that one of the cafes they have on site just became one of like a grab and go place instead of a full service restaurant. So sometimes there's like these changes year over year. Well, this year, there weren't really any changes to anything. There were some new classes offered, but like overall, it was very, very similar to the previous two years. But then I went for a spa treatment. The first thing they do is they take you to the locker room and you pick out a locker, you know, to get changed and um, put on your little, they have little spa slides and, you know, just get ready for your spa treatment. And I noticed that, and and I tend to like, so I'm based in Atlanta and my, um, and this is in Arizona. So I'm like three hours back. And so I might be like messaging with my kids or something like that. But if I'm like, oh, hey, I'm about to go into a treatment, you know, I might like leave my phone and in the locker room. Well, I noticed this year that that wasn't an option, that I was gonna leave my phone in the locker room. And that is because the spa robes, you know, little white kind of waffle knit spa robes that you change into, the pockets had been sewn shut. So if you think about it, like, getting changed, you're putting on your spa robe, you've got your slides. The last thing that you do is usually you stash your cell phone. Not everybody, but a lot of people stash their cell phone in that robe pocket. And then what happens is they take you upstairs. There's this really pretty waiting area with like really plush couches. And then it's glass windows that overlooks the desert. And I'm remembering a couple of treatments where it was like sun setting time. And so it's always this beautiful view. Now I tend to not take my phone. And the reason why I remember this is because I'm always up on the second floor looking at this beautiful view. There's like mountains and cactus and it's just pretty. And my thought is crap, I can't take a picture. Like my phone's not in my, I don't have my phone because I always just go up there. You know, the point is to disconnect, right? So it would crack me up in the past three years of waiting in this waiting room, I would see couples, I would see girls on like a girl's weekend trip. And then I would see solo folks like me in the waiting room, scrolling their phones. 
And it would irritate me because I would think, you guys are missing this, this sunset. Oh my God, you're missing it. Stop it. Like you can scroll on your phone anywhere, right? You can scroll, you can do this anywhere, right? Don't doom scroll, look, look up. And so this year, that simple change of like, zip, zip to sew those pockets shut prevented, I would say, at least 80% of the people, because then you would have to physically carry your phone and you're like carrying your phone. And it's just an awkward thing to like, and also it's just like, you can't do it sneakily. It's a whole thing. I bet they had so many more people actually show up and disconnect in that downtime, in that waiting space than in years past. And I noticed it. So I was sitting in the waiting room having experienced this change. And it felt like couples were talking. It felt like people were just standing. There's like a balcony and just leaning on the balcony and just breathing, just looking right. Or me, like I tend to like choose a cozy, um, like chair and just like think, just think or not think right. Where it's just kind of like, eh, just, just, just space. So this idea made me think about how, even though we're adults, sometimes we need people to guide us and add guardrails, right? To sew the pocket shut. And especially if you're a mission-driven organization, a nonprofit, there are probably ways that your programs or services are already doing this, right? The idea is, where are you putting in systems, guardrails, anything, to sew the pocket shut so that people have the best or most optimal experience, right? I will tell you personally, one of the ways that I do it, that just popped into my head. If I'm teaching something live um, or even some of my courses, right? My courses too, any, any sort of training with me. One of the things that I do on purpose by design is have a limited time, a spacious but limited time for you to consume that content. Why? Because if I give you forever, most people, not all people, but lots of people will take forever. I know that that's true of me, right? We just kick the can further down. But if we know that something is time sensitive, we're more likely to take it and implement it, okay? Another way that I might get people to implement it, and I'm talking about this in a future podcast, is this idea of like, what do I need you to do? What nudges do you need? How can I best support you to help you implement it? So maybe it's a coaching call. Maybe it's a template, right? Or maybe it's a hyper-specific training, right? Or system. Here's an idea for a lot of organizations is the pockets being open and not sewn shut is friction. So a lot of times when I onboard a client or somebody comes to me and joins Amplify Social Impact, for example, one of the things that we'll look at is how, what tool they're using for donations to accept donations And it will be a very clunky experience. So for example, if you have an Instagram post that is asking for donations, literally, how many clicks does it take for me until I'm completed and I'm on the thank you page of the experience? And second to that, how was the experience? Was it was it clunky? Was it friction? Was it hard to understand? Was it accessible? Right? So we want to create one way you can sew the pocket shut is creating a frictionless using a frictionless donation tool. If you need a a recommendation for that, I feel like I've tried them all (laughs) and I definitely have some favorites. So I'm happy to help you with that. But this idea of if we're asking somebody, think about it this way. If you're asking somebody to make a, a gift, okay, or become a monthly donor, let's make it specific. You're asking somebody to become a monthly donor and the link that you take them to, the link they click has an option to donate once, has an option lower down on the page to volunteer, has something that links to your most recent blog post. You guys, I have decision fatigue. Maybe I'm like, ooh, that looks interesting. I've clicked before I know it, I'm off the page. We wanna give people exactly what they need to make the exact decision they want. Let's use another example of how you could help sew the pocket shut. This would be just updating your bio, your website, and any above the fold messaging on your website. So here's what I mean. Like, let's say on the landing page of your website, 
you'd be surprised how many times I will land on your website and there may be either outdated messaging, like something promoting something that has happened in the past, or just it's not clear. It is not clear. I have had many discovery calls with organizations where I'm unclear if you are hyper local, you serve Atlanta only, or if you're serving across the United States, like it's unclear, right? So making sure that above the fold, meaning before I hit the scroll, that I am very clear who you are, who you're for, and that there is a compelling call to action that sounds like you, not an ominous robotic brand. And let's talk about way another way you could sew the pockets shut. And this is a this may be like, ooh, a little sticky, but it sometimes looks like sunsetting or ending a program offering marketing channel that doesn't have a lot of ROI and is a bandwidth eater. So that's like helping yourself in that process. So if you look at all of your social networks, and there is one that's clearly just not a um, maybe no longer aligns with you or is not high ROI, meaning you're just not getting much traction or engagement on it, you know that you can end that, right? You know you can sunset it. And for my for profits, if there is just something that you offer that is no longer aligned, that is no longer the work you want to do, or is just not the right, you know, offering, you know you can you can sunset it. <laughs> like this can happen just because you've always had it doesn't mean you have to keep doing it. Idea of this concept is accountability, right? Sometimes we need accountability from like literally a mentor, a coach, and that helps us create an environment to make better choices, right? And I bet a lot of your programs do just that, right? Sometimes we need to create these guardrails and systems internally, right? And that's how we do it, by streamlining, by cutting out um gosh, the amount of posts that I've seen where people are saying, you know, before I send out an email or before I can schedule content, it has to go through, you know, these seven people for approval. No, it doesn't, right? And really making sure that you're streamlining your process so you can do a couple of things. One, avoid burnout. Two, get out in the arena, create content. And three, use your time, get your time back when you have a workflow that is working for you and not against you, right? So pushing back on some of those constructs of this is how we've always done it, or this is the only way to do it, and instead saying, where do we need internally to sew the pockets shut? And maybe externally, where can we guide our most perfect fit clients or donors or fans, right? Where can we guide them to connect with us, to deepen our relationship in a way that is actually like scalable and sustainable. That is the entire point of this. And if you think about it, if we go back to the spa example from the beginning, sewing the pockets shut in the robes wasn't just about not being on your phone. If you think about it, right? That is the immediate effect of sewing the pockets shut is that most people aren't going to carry around their phone or whoever, whatever else they were putting in those pockets, right? The actual more lasting and long-term effect is their experience of the resort, their experience of their spa service, their experience of their surroundings. Maybe instead they actually talk with somebody else in the, in the waiting room and If you're like me, sometimes a single conversation, like a five minute conversation just to connect with somebody, it like makes your day, right? Or maybe instead they actually have a moment of just peace and relaxation and they are way more prompted to leave an amazing review of their experience or of your resort or whatever the thing is, right? Because you gave them, like you opened the door to give them an experience that they didn't think to give themselves by putting the phone in the locker or felt a little sticky. They're like, well, I kind of want my phone. What if I want to take a picture? And that may be true that sewing the pocket shut means that I can't take a picture of the beautiful view while I'm waiting for a massage. But it also means that if I really, really, really want to take a picture after my massage and go grab my phone, go back upstairs and take the picture, right? Like it's just optimizing and the experience in a way that is just going to pay off. It's going to pay off for the client or customer. It's going to pay off 
for the provider, for the organization, right? It's, it's symbiotic. It works together in that way. So after this little homework, ask yourself, I would do it internally and externally. Where can we internally do this? in our organization or in my business, that maybe I need to add some tweaks to remove some friction and streamline my processes. That would be the first thing. Where can I sew the pocket shut internally? And then think about your core audience, your core, whatever it is you offer, maybe even uh, the, the kind of core way you fundraise, right? And think about what in that process is sticky? What in that process is distracting? What in that process isn't helping people to connect and nurture and develop a longer relationship with you? And write down a list and start working through that list. Remove the friction. And yeah, I have an amazing episode coming up for you next week that will relate back to this process and even have a a very um, budget-friendly way that you can get some help to implement So stay tuned for next week's episode and um, I will see you next time. Bye. If you ask me, everyone should have a coach, especially you. I want to invite you to schedule a free discovery call with me. Go to splendidatl.com forward slash contact. You'll see my calendar there. Book a call with me. You'll learn about my smart growth method where we can grow your business or organization sustainably with ease and massive impact. Think you've reached out to everyone in your network. Are you out of ideas to get noticed and get funded? I hear you. That's why I'm giving you a chance to steal my prospect list. Yes, you can generate leads for your nonprofit or impact driven business. Grab my mini training and list delivered to your inbox instantly. Go to splendidcourses.com forward slash prospect.